Hey guys, if you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Appreciate you. Now let's get to it. What's up everybody, it's the Average Gamer signing back on for another video. Today I want to continue the standards and expectation video series I started a while back as I think it relates to some of the current discourse going on in the gaming community relating to the game awards, console loyalists, and studios that make these exclusive titles. Now I already addressed some of the console war drama before, but I think a more structured video is in order. One, because they are back at it again as usual, and two, because I think it relates to the theme of this series of course, which I will get to in a bit. To start, if you have been living under a rock or not on Twitter, good for you by the way, the Game Award nominations have been revealed and there is one game not included that has ruffled some feathers of a particular fan base. This of course with the exclusion of Starfield in the Game of the Year category. This caused an obvious uproar and re-sparked the debate between Starfield and Spider-Man 2 in particular which was nominated and thus Xbox vs PlayStation as well as Xbox loyalists pulling the typical victimhood complex where you act like everyone hates you when the game you adore does not get the recognition you think it deserves. Now this vid is not going to address the game awards in particular, I just wanted to give some context as to how this discourse started. What this video is about is the console war dynamic, Xbox vs Playstation, Starfield vs Spider-Man 2, and for the purposes of this video, as well, Bethesda vs Insomniac games. I find that these games are discussed in the manner they are, particularly by console loyalists, to some extent because of these standards and expectations in regards to the studios that make these titles. Now I want to stress that I'm talking about the fanboys and stands here. If you are someone who just plays these games and enjoys them for what they are, I am definitely not talking about you. And my friend, you are what society deems as, you know, normal. This is about console loyalists and the BS they consistently spew that is so irrational and undermines their own cause, being the idea that their exclusives, and thus the studios that make them, are better than the other. Now I have wasted your time enough, let's start with Starfield and Xbox loyalists. I think Starfield is a good game, personally I give it around a 7 out of 10, and I think it does a lot of great things, particularly shipbuilding and capturing ships, and has some solid gun variety. But as I'm sure you've noticed by now, there are so many people trying to argue that this game was a game of the generation, or some innovative title by Bethesda. Now if you're like me, this opinion was quite shocking, especially after watching playthroughs or playing the game yourself. I struggled to see what about this title was really game changing to warrant such praise from Xbox loyalists. To be honest, I still think a game like Hi-Fi Rush is noticeably better, yet it did not receive the praise that this game is getting. Many of the things great about this game were present in past Bethesda titles and a series like Mass Effect which this game is often compared to. Not to mention it has many of the issues that you definitely don't want to have in an RPG game in particular, such as poor AI, restricted exploration, and immersion breaking aspects like long loading times and uninteresting boring drawn out traversal sections. As someone who has a channel in part about giving opinions and just a general love for conversation and debate, I pride myself on trying to figure out why people believe the things they do, and not just what they believe. Now the simple answer would be to say that they are Xbox stands who will defend the game no matter what, but I think that's only part of it. Again, games like Hi For Us did not receive this much attention from these same stands. I think the real reason for this level of hype, defense, praise, etc for this title in particular has to do with the theme of this video, standards and expectations. If we are to be fair, regardless of your console love or whatever, Xbox has been the worst of the bunch in terms of exclusive titles on a pure critical rating level. And a lot of this is on Bethesda being one of the most well known studios under Microsoft. Their last big title was Fallout 76 which was, you know, a game. Not to mention nothing new was coming out of Xbox in general, just a continuation of previous franchises and IPs, and many of these continuations were at best okay and at worst, you know, Fallout 76. But because of this, loyalists were pretty desperate for something they can sink their teeth into, something new and made with some decency. In comes Starfield, a big new IP property that, at the very least, feels a little bit different, and you have a game that loyalists will defend to their dying breath. And why is this? Well, their standards plummeted these past 10 years in particular and expectations were low, and thus any decent game would have gotten their attention. Sadly because of this, they are willing to defend this game to irrational levels despite it being in many ways the bare minimum for a new IP for a studio with the size and money as Bethesda. If you're still not with me, think about it like this. Cyberpunk 2077 was received so poorly at launch in part because, you know, the game sucked, but also because it was from a studio that had a great reputation and thus a high standard. 
I mean, this was the team responsible for The Witcher 3, so expectations were high to say the least, and as we know, they kind of fumbled. What happened with Starfield is essentially the opposite. It is really unfortunate, but I think these Xbox loyalists only do themselves a disservice defending titles that would be considered at best mid if they came from any other studio. And of course, the toxic and disingenuous way they do defend the game does not help their case either. Now in regards to their equally annoying counterpart. I like PlayStation and I have made this very clear. Although close, I have probably played more PlayStation exclusives than Xbox or Nintendo. So it is profoundly disappointing to see people who love Sony, like myself, operate in such poor ways. In an effort to dunk on the X-Bots, as they call them, these PlayStation loyalists have ignored blatant missed opportunities by PlayStation exclusive studios, which is weird seeing as though they act like their studios are so superior but don't hold them to that standard. The latest example being Insomniac Games with Spider-Man 2. Now Spider-Man 2 is great, I give it around an 8 out of 10, however I'm seeing people rate it a high 9 or some even perfect scores. Similar to Xbox stance, this was probably baffling to us normal people, although admittedly, and sorry for the Xbox fans, there was easily 5 times as many Xbox stands as PlayStation ones, at least in my preparation for making this video. If these PlayStation stands really thought their side was superior and studios like Insomniac clear everything Xbox has to offer, I find it odd that they would rate a game like Spider-Man 2 so highly, seeing its glaring flaws and being a relatively safe game overall. Now I have been a fan of Insomniac games since the early 2000s and do consider them a top 5 studio in the industry at the moment, like many of these fanboys probably do. The difference is, I actually treat them like they are one of the best, and thus the problems with Spider-Man 2 are unacceptable. But these stands seem to just give it a pass and rate the game highly anyway. This is, by far, relative to time period, one of the buggiest games Insomniac has ever put out. In my playthrough specifically, I had multiple, big and small, bugs, and three of them were so bad they required a restart. Now many PlayStation loyalists wrote out such criticisms, because such people on the, you know, other team, quote unquote, were disingenuous with this flaw of the game, posting apparent bugs that were clearly formed in the picture mode the game has. But that does not mean the criticism was invalid in any regard. It just seems these guys have an intuitive instinct to rate every game out of Sony highly just because it's Sony, not because it's actually made with the highest quality possible. Similar to Starfield, if we are to be honest with ourselves, Spider-Man 2 is not that innovative of a title and they, without question, played it safe. Virtually everything in the game we have seen before just repackaged in different ways from the previous two games and the Batman Arkham series which it is often compared to, like Mass Effect with Starfield. The game simply is not that innovative and in some regards they regressed even farther than what the Batman games were. For instance, why can you not switch between Peter and Miles during the crime fights they do together? Also, although the removal of the gadget wheel was good to allow for more fluid combat, why did they remove almost every gadget from the previous games? I get focusing more on combat, but given how you were allowed to switch abilities to customize your playstyle, it seems like a miss to not be able to do the same with gadgets. These are blatant missteps and missed opportunities that make this title in some ways a step backwards from the series they clearly took inspiration from and even their own previous titles. Now of course we give credit for the new stuff like the web line and more traversal options, but for a PlayStation exclusive that is so much better than anything Xbox has made by a studio far better than any Xbox has, you would think these PlayStation stands would expect more and have a higher standard for such a title. Honestly, this game seems to be more focused on setting up for a third game than anything else at times. If Insomniac Games is as goaded as these PlayStation loyalists suggest, this is simply unacceptable and looking at Sony broadly doesn't really help their case either. Sony has been writing the same IPs for quite a while now, particularly Naughty Dog, who has pushed out The Last of Us stuff primarily for the past 10 years. We have also seen continuations of games like Spider-Man, of course, and God of War, but we have not gotten anything new for quite some time. This will change next year with Insomniac Games, funnily enough, with their Wolverine title, but by and large they have been milking this, the same set amount of titles for a while. Despite whether they are good or not, if we hold Sony to the standard that these fanboys want to act like it is, I would argue the lack of new IPs should be noted and the fact that these individuals seem content with them milking the same set of old because they are too focused on saying we are better than the bots is pretty sad and similar to Xbox fans hurts their cause as studios never have to release anything new or innovative and these guys will eat it up with a smile. Overall, I hate both sides. 
they both annoy me and don't do anything good for the community as a whole or the community they support. We want to see studios do well, exclusive or not, and yes, some have a better track record than others. But these console loyalists have reduced the discourse so much that they ironically enough lower the standard for studios they champion despite their claim that they have a high one. It is very hilarious that Nintendo fans rarely engage with this stuff relative to the other two. I mean, those guys have been sitting around catching Pokemon and playing Zelda and letting the other two bicker for years, knowing that they are the real ones on top. It is hilarious that this also picked back up during the Game Awards of all things. I mean, sure, Spider-Man 2 got the nom and not Starfield, and I personally would have had both up there. However, let's be real here, Baldur's Gate 3 is winning, so these people are actually bickering and fighting over who is technically in the club with them, despite it not really being close. But hey, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below on this new saga of the never-ending stupidity of the console war. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and dropping a like, as it helps me out a lot, as well as checking out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching, this is The Average Gamer, signing off. See you guys.